Canada has taken its first major step toward establishing a high-speed rail system on its territory. Just weeks ago, the government selected a private partner to deliver an HSR line between Toronto and Quebec City by the mid-2030s. Three years ago, we released a video analyzing all potential routes and alternatives debated in Canada over recent decades, none of which progressed beyond studies and paper proposals. But now the landscape has shifted dramatically, and this new initiative is the focus of today's video. One of Canada's most extensively analyzed routes is the Quebec City Windsor Corridor, often branded simply as the Corridor, stretching 1,150 kilometers between Quebec City in the northeast and Windsor in the southwest. This region is the country's most densely populated and industrialized zone. The corridor's significance cannot be overstated. It accounts for 61% of Canada's population, 62% of its labor market, and 59% of its GDP. Despite its economic and demographic dominance, rail infrastructure here remains underdeveloped. VIA Rail, Canada's national passenger rail operator, provides regular service along the corridor. However, it faces systemic challenges. With only 70% on time performance, its trains struggle to compete with air travel and highways as a reliable transportation option. A key issue lies in infrastructure ownership. VA Rail operates almost exclusively on tracks owned by Canadian National, a freight rail giant. This shared usage creates frequent conflicts, leading to delays and limited scheduling flexibility for passenger services. On screen you can see a map of the Quebec City Windsor Corridor with yellow highlights indicating the small fraction of tracks owned directly by VAA Rail. These sections, such as segments near Ottawa and Montreal, demonstrate marginally better performance, but they represent less than 10% of the total network. The lack of dedicated passenger infrastructure severely restricts VIA Rail's ability to attract a larger share of travelers, despite rising demand in the corridor. In 2023, VIA Rail transported 4.1 million passengers, with a staggering 96% of trips concentrated within the Quebec City Windsor Corridor. This corridor also generated 82% of VIA Rail's passenger revenue from intercity travel. Despite these figures, rail travel remains a marginal player, accounting for just 2% of all trips, while cars dominate with a 94% share. To address this imbalance, VIA Rail introduced the high-frequency rail proposal in 2015 as a strategic response to rising passenger demand and persistent operational challenges in the Quebec City-Toronto corridor. The HFR plan aimed to deliver significant service improvements without the prohibitive costs of a full high-speed rail system. Unlike many traditional high-speed rail projects in Europe or Asia, which require entirely new infrastructure, the HFR model proposed upgrading existing tracks and reusing abandoned rail alignments where possible. This incremental approach sought to enable faster, more frequent and more reliable service using VIA Rail's existing or slightly upgraded fleet. The original HFR plan estimated a $5 billion capital investment, focusing on restoring the abandoned Havelock to Glen Tay railway alignment. This restored route would create a shorter, more direct path between Ottawa and Toronto, drastically reducing travel times between Canada's capital and its largest city. Additional upgrades to tracks near Peterborough and Trois-Rivières would raise standards to Class 5 or 6, allowing trains to operate at speeds up to 180 km per hour. The proposal also emphasized scalability, with provisions for future enhancements like electrification or higher speeds once ridership justified further investment. Designed as a middle-ground solution, HFR aimed to modernize rail service at a fraction of the cost of full high-speed systems. While the high-frequency rail project was initially seen as a cost-effective way to improve rail service in the Toronto-Quebec City corridor, 
it became evident that incremental upgrades would fall short of addressing long-term travel demands. Even with proposed track upgrades enabling speeds of up to 180 km per hour, travel times would remain uncompetitive for key routes. For instance, the Toronto-Montreal trip under HFR would still take over 4 hours, which is comparable to total air travel time when accounting for airport procedures, while car journeys average 5.5 hours, but it brings a convenience of door-to-door -door service. This left rail at a disadvantage for time-sensitive travelers, particularly business passengers, limiting its potential to significantly grow ridership. Another critical flaw with the HFR model was its continued reliance on shared infrastructure. Although the plan included some dedicated passenger track segments, most of the network would still operate on Canadian national freight-owned lines. In this case, VIA Rail's services would remain vulnerable to delays, scheduling bottlenecks and operational restrictions. Even with infrastructure upgrades, the lack of full separation from freight movements meant passenger trains would struggle to achieve the reliability and frequency needed to shift travelers away from cars or planes. Faced with these limitations, the Canadian government began exploring options for a dedicated high-speed rail system, marking a strategic pivot inspired by global successes. International examples demonstrated that fully dedicated electrified HSR networks operating at speeds up to 300 km per hour could dramatically outperform the HFR model. For example, a dedicated HSR line between Toronto and Montreal could reduce travel times to just 3 hours, offering a competitive advantage over both cars and air travel. The proposed high-speed rail corridor between Toronto and Quebec City shares notable parallels with established international routes such as Madrid-Barcelona in Spain, where 14 million passengers were transported in 2023. Spanning approximately 800 kilometers and encompassing 13.3 million residents, Canada's corridor includes four of the nation's seven largest metropolitan areas. This demographic and geographic scale closely mirrors the Madrid-Barcelona corridor, which serves a population of around 13 million and has successfully operated high-speed rail since 2008. However, unlike Spain's mountainous terrain, Canada's corridor features relatively gentle topography. The route avoids major mountain ranges, with the highest elevation at Peterborough Station, modestly 193 meters above sea level. The most notable geographic hurdles are river crossings, particularly sections of the St. Lawrence River near Montreal, which will require tunnels or bridges. Given the project's scale and complexity, the Canadian government determined that a traditional publicly funded model might not ensure timely or cost-effective delivery. Instead, it opted for a public-private partnership framework for leveraging private sector expertise, financing and risk management. Under this 30- to 50-year contractual arrangement, the selected private consortium will assume comprehensive responsibilities. Designing the entire infrastructure network, including route alignment, technology selection, with securing financing to minimize taxpayer burden, with construction, operation and maintenance of the system. The procurement process for Canada's high-speed rail project began in March 2022 with a call for expressions of interest. This multi-stage process required bidders to submit two distinct proposals. One utilizing existing freight rail alignments supplemented by dedicated tracks to enable higher speeds and a second proposing fully dedicated high-speed rail system. Bidders were also encouraged to submit innovative alternatives exceeding baseline requirements, ensuring the selection process prioritized solutions that maximize efficiency, speed and long-term value for Canadian passengers. To manage the procurement's complexity and maintain rigorous oversight, the federal government established ALTO, a subsidiary of VIA Rail, in November 2020, a specialized administrative entity tasked with coordinating stakeholders, including government agencies, private investors and technical advisors. 
Simultaneously, Alto was assigned critical roles in regulatory compliance and community engagement. This includes conducting environmental impact assessments, securing federal and provincial approvals, consulting with indigenous communities along the proposed routes, and ensuring alignment with Canada's transportation policies. After two and a half years of intensive procurement activities, three consortiums have advanced to the final shortlist. First is Cadence, led by CDPQ Infra, with partners Atkins Realis, Sistra Canada, Keolis Canada, Air Canada and SNCF Voyageurs, combining Canadian infrastructure expertise with French high-speed rail operational experience. Second is Intercity Rail Developers, a multinational coalition featuring Ellisdon Capital, Kilmer Transportation, First Rail Holdings, Jacobs, Hatch, CIMA Plus, First Group, RATP Dev Canada, and Spain's Renfe Operadora, which operates one of Europe's most extensive high-speed networks. A third consortium is Q-Connexion Rail Partners, comprising Fangate, John Laying, Bechtel, WSP Canada and Deutsche Bahn, leveraging German know-how in developing a high-speed rail system. Each consortium submitted a detailed proposal addressing a technically and commercially viable design for the rail system, including alignment choices, station locations and integration with existing transport networks. Also, proposals included a robust business and management plan covering all phases, from construction timelines and risk mitigation strategies to long-term operational and maintenance frameworks. Following an extensive evaluation process, the Cadence Consortium was formally selected as the preferred private sector partner for Canada's Alto High Speed Rail project on February 19th. Project promoter Alto will now finalize a co-development contract with Cadence, led by CDPQ Infra, a subsidiary of Quebec's public pension fund. CDPQ Infra brings proven rail expertise to the project, notably through its ongoing construction of Montreal's Réseau Express Metropolitan, an automated light rail system featured in one of our recent videos. This contract will oblige the Canadian government to provide 4.2 billion Canadian dollars in funding over six years for planning and preparatory phase. While exact project costs remain speculative, preliminary estimates suggest a total price tag between 60 and 90 billion dollars, contingent on final design choices, land acquisition challenges and construction timelines. The project now enters a critical phase where ALTO, other government agencies and the Cadence Consortium must finalize the route alignment, station locations and feasibility studies. Key tasks include initiating geotechnical surveys, land acquisition processes and detailed design work that will last for several years. However, the project's trajectory may face uncertainty depending on upcoming government elections. A new administration could prioritize competing investments in military energy infrastructure or national security, potentially shifting focus away from high-speed rail. Despite these challenges, the Alto project undoubtedly represents the most ambitious passenger rail initiative in Canadian history. Whether this becomes Canada's counterpart of California's HSR or Britain's HS2, only time will tell. For now, progress remains in its early stages and we will continue to provide updates as tangible developments emerge. In future videos, we hope to discuss finalized route alignments and station designs. It's worth noting that once completed, the project is expected to replace a significant number of short-haul flights between cities like Toronto, Ottawa and Montreal with high-speed rail services. For those concerned about airline impacts, Air Canada's participation in the consortium is no coincidence. They will get their own piece of the pie. If you enjoyed this overview, feel free to like, subscribe and enable notifications to stay informed about upcoming content. For exclusive updates, consider supporting us on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Don't forget to check out our railway-themed merchandise store. Your support helps us create more in-depth analyses. 
Thank you for watching and we look forward to sharing more details as Canada's high-speed rail journey unfolds.